the all-star app the number one app in the business ufc bellator one championship pfl and more get the app right now link in description unified mma 48 super lightweight title main event alex white is out darren smith jr is in what is your reaction to switch yeah let's fucking go <laughs> i don't care um I've never really signed a contract six, eight weeks out and expected that to be the opponent. My, my opponents have changed many times, so makes no difference to me. Has that always been your attitude with fighting is whenever you sign a yeah. fight, you just don't expect it to be the opponent that's coming into the cage? Um, yeah. Yeah, really. Like I've never played too much or, or focused too much to 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 kind of fight any one opponent on my 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 entire fight career has been evolving fight by fight, so no fight has been ever the end the end result or the end goal. So everyone is just kind of a stepping stone to something beyond that. Anyway, did they tell you why White decided to pull out? Um, yeah, I think I heard something. I didn't really care. It doesn't make any difference to me. The uh, I I'm sure it's a very legitimate reason. Um. Especially, like he's very legitimate. Like he's he's, you know, pulling out for no reason. I'm sure it was a broken bone or ligament or something. So, so Darren Smith, man, when you when you heard the name, like, what did you think? Uh, well, when I was really young, my neighbor, his name was Darren, so that's pretty cool. We we scrap all the time. Yeah. So you said your your neighbor when you were a kid was named Darren, and you guys used to scrap all the time. So you're just gonna pretend that that's your neighbor when you step into that yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It'd be a good time. They're like nostalgic, you know. For sure. And uh, yeah, what were the scraps like? Let's let's take it back. Well, neither of us knew how to throw a punch, so we just push each other in the leaves, I guess. <laughs> the bushes, yeah kick each other a little bit yeah (laughs) didn't know how to punch back then for sure i don't think anybody knew how to punch back then right it was more (laughs) of a wrestling right yeah when i look back at uh your your record for for unified you're undefeated you're that's right you're 10 and 0 man like yeah are you still unbeatable under that promotion um i mean i ran through all the canadian talent that's my weight. I brought in champions from Holland, brought in uh, champions from America. Uh, now Alex was American, and Karen Smith is, is American too. So um, I'm an easy person to, to beat anyway. Uh, I got no quit in me for one, and I am very well rounded. There's, you know, there's nowhere that anyone can take me in, in an MMA fight where I'm not overly uncomfortable right i've i've tapped black belts and i've i've had black back belt black belt corners screaming for their 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 fighter just hold on till the end of the round just hold on to that position um but uh yeah i'm a combative genius so when it comes down to to the scrap within there i'm i'm no one easy to put away has it been difficult to to get fights for yourself in the last couple of years uh well covid really shut a lot of stuff down and made it uh more difficult to get into the states and and whatnot there but unified is always you know when they they have a when they book me for a fight they always even if the fighter falls out they've they've uh they've made the bout happen so i'm always confident in that um the beginning of this year, I had three fights. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, well, the end of last year and into the beginning of this year, I had three fights, uh, I think, in like less than six months. And I had knee surgery right after the, the last one, a week after the last fight there. So I've just been recovering from that, and this is the first first fight back. So it's not that I really had that much of a problem. Um, I guess Unified has had a hard time having any Canadian talent step up. but. Uh, we did have Kyle, and that was good. But back to reaching out. Did the did the knee injury happen in that fight against Kyle, or was it during the training camp? 
Oh no, that knee injury was there for a couple of years. Uh, I've been dealing with, and then, yeah, the the Canadian Canadian healthcare system takes like uh, you know six seven months for to get your MRI results, and then another six seven months to see a specialist, and then another six seven months to uh, to be in for the surgery. So it's a process. So throughout yeah. that whole time, you're training and fighting, but you're actually thinking about getting a knee surgery. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you do, right? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah, that's that's that. You know, I can't just sit on the sidelines and then, you know, all that time passes, two year passes, and I didn't have any fight. I can't. I couldn't do that either. So, it is what it is. How did you manage to to keep your knee from just completely shutting down throughout that whole process? Well, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't use it. So did you adjust your style, I didn't, like I didn't, your fighting style? Yeah, exactly. So at that time, I didn't have any butterfly. Like, I didn't have any elevation in that butterfly lift. So I never went there. Um, and I I became southpaw in that time frame as well. So it wasn't – so that knee wasn't, you know, as close of a target for my opponents. And just make adjustments. And I got better at other other skills and techniques in that time frame too. So – Going south, Paul, man, and and adjusting. That's so interesting to me. Like, how do <laughs> oh, yeah. you do that? I mean, it was in hell of a time, right? Because most people well, wouldn't yeah. even try. I guess. Uh, and all those people already failed, too. So, like, you know, it's depending on where you're at. And many people today are just fucking willing to give up before they try. And I guess that's just not my style. So, whatever. It's not the first time in my career that I've had to go south, Paul, based on injuries. Um, but that's also why I can go southpaw too. Uh, whatever injury, whether the injury, ha- if an injury happens in the first round, I can't just give up and say, oh, well, I broke my arm or this hand's broke. It doesn't matter. I still got to continue the fight. Right. So um, just in training. And, and as I train, if I can't, like to be injured, I can't just go sit on a couch in all that time frame. I'll lose my mind and go crazy. Like I have to. I'm a very mobile person. I gotta gotta stay moving and, and be active my whole life. I can't just sit around and do nothing. So when when did the South Paul like you know training it? Of course, you, you know you're tentative, right? Because you're yeah. developing that skill set. When did you feel yeah. like you were like really comfortable being in that stance and just coming out in that stance and just throwing anything? Well, on my on my 19th birthday, uh, it was my 10th amateur fight, and I fought uh, Joe Carino uh for the second time he beat me the first time i fought him for the second time but it was for a a title so we did i finally got to wear no shin pads it was a five round war and we a lot of shin to shin kicks um but i won the the title won that fight and then uh the next week me cruel in and i we drove down to detroit and we got set up in a fight was supposed to be an eight-man tournament and then as we were driving they called us going to be a four-man tournament then when i showed up they said it was just going to be me versus uh, this this big guy, Steve. And uh, we didn't get to see him weigh in, but when we saw him the next day, he was a big dude. But from the week before, my right shin was all busted up. So I went southpaw for that fight to throw the, the left kick. And I got more comfortable in that fight. Wow, man. So now you're pretty much like ambidextrous with your, with your striking? Yeah. yeah. That's right. And, and in your run right now, right, the the run you're on, which is pretty incredible, the amount of wins you've picked up in the last couple of years, it does it confuse? Do you see sometimes the confusion in your opponents when you're switching you know, stances continuously? Um, usually I can pick up on that kind of stuff quite a bit, but uh, no, it's it's funny actually. I I don't see it as much. At least I don't pick up on it as much right away. Um, that's one thing that's to, uh, to, to do some, some tape study is good because certain opponents, they're just not good against an Orthodox or a Southpaw and adversely they can be very good against the opposite stance. So it would be crazy not to take them where they're just a fish out of water. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, man. I, I love seeing that type of, that type of style. 
where you're able to, you know, like Alex Volkanovsky, mm-hmm. if you look at him, he fights both stances and switches stances continuously and just confuses the shit out of everybody. And that's why he's been able to beat yeah. pretty much everybody in that division with a style, right? And he has decent wrestling. Yeah. Um, for this training camp, man, has it changed anybody? You know, you were coming off the injury. When did you, when were you able to get the surgery and, and fully recover? Uh, well, I had it booked for a week after my fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the last fight there with um with Kyle uh, went for surgery the week after and then just been healing. I mean, I got into training uh, quite quick after, but I spent the summer hiking and uh, camping quite a bit. Nice. How is the, the camping and, and hiking there? It must be beautiful, man. Canada, of course, you guys got the great wilderness out there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I mean, across Canada, it, it, it it differs like wildly from mountains to plains and, and everywhere else. But I, I spent a, a good amount of time in the Okanagan. It was extremely beautiful and less bugs than other places like Winnipeg. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it very therapeutic. For sure. Um, when you went into surgery, right, you're, it was a week after your fight. You must have been beat up a yeah. little bit right did the doctors or nurses say anything like why why are you so bruised up like going no, to surgery no. was there any no i don't usually i don't really let hit i don't really let hit people hit me very much um okay. so there's no bruising on my face there's almost not any bruising on my face after any fight uh but even in the rest of my body like i don't take damage very much in general but even when i do like i don't bruise quite a bit so yeah there's I didn't. I didn't look like that any worse for wear at all. Oh, that sounds good. I- now with uh, with training, you said that you know you did some hiking, you did some camping. That's kind of you know the way you rehabbed. When did you actually get back to the gym and start to go full blast? Um, uh, I, mean, I guess more so in the last month or so. I kind of I took a few months off, just really, really chilled out and waited for an opponent anyway um yeah so in the last last month two months i say i really kicked it up oh so perfect timing man heading into this fight then yeah yeah it's pretty good timing yeah so what do you expect out of yourself in this fight against uh darren smith your old neighbor (laughs) yeah (laughs) um yeah just put it together like i don't know i i usually go in there just trying to to impress myself so who knows what i what i throw out i i got i got a lot of different tricks up the sleeves so it's it's always whatever my opponent is is willing to give up i can't uh you know i can't just impose everything i want i gotta kind of be like water and and you know take what is given i see that there's some rumors flying around about a uh about a UFC show in early 2023 in Canada, especially the Western part of Canada. Is that something that you're keeping an eye on? Cause I feel like you're one of the guys that should be signed already to the UFC there. It's like, why are they not signed? Talent? Well, it's tough, right? Especially if, uh, if you chose to not take the, the jab, then they're not letting people like that over the border. Right. So we're still being discriminated against very hard. Um, so Oh, it's only a matter of time with like shows like Died Suddenly and and all this other information that's coming out about uh, everything. You know what I mean? The CDC is even saying that ivermectin is extremely good for you. Um, they could have saved hundreds of millions of people. So this whole like narrative is really falling apart, and the border can't be shut down forever. So I'm gonna hold my ground. Um, and but like with that being said. Uh, if if they bring a show to Canada, that is, how could they not sign me? The only way is if I lose this next fight, which no way I'm letting happen. All right. I'm in December 16th, Unified MMA 48. Go to the descriptions, download the All-Star app. Shane, appreciate the time, man, and uh, all the best in the fight, man. You know, they need yeah. more t- Canadian Thank talent you. in that UFC. Kate, so yeah. That yeah. Yeah. Thanks, you. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Take care.